Hi. Now what I'd like to show you in this tutorial is how we do problems where we've got a particle moving freely under gravity. By gravity we're saying that a particle, assuming that there's no air resistance, will fall to the Earth with an acceleration, a constant acceleration, which we'll say is generally about 9.8 meters per second per second. It will vary depending on where you are on the Earth, but we'll take this value here as being 9.8 meters per second per second. And what we've got here is a typical problem where we've got a ball is thrown upwards from a balcony with a speed of 3 meters per second, 8 meters above the ground. And what we've got to do is find the time taken for the ball to hit the ground and the speed at which it hits the ground. Okay, now to do a problem like this, I would always suggest you draw a little sketch. So I would draw the ground here and I would have the ball being thrown upwards, say, at a distance of 8 meters from the ground. So we'll have this as 8 meters. Just mark that in like so. And it's thrown upwards at 3 meters per second, so we'll just mark that in. 3 meters per second. Now we're dealing with velocities and I would always suggest that you have a positive direction and that positive direction is in the initial direction of motion so that's going to be upwards so I'm going to set a positive direction upwards. Very important. Now this ball is obviously going to travel from here upwards and then turn around and then come all the way back down again. Okay? And during that motion it's going to experience an acceleration directed towards the ground. That acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second per second. So we've got to find out how long it takes for that ball to go up and back down, hit the ground. And in order to do that, what I'm going to use is a SUVAT equation. I don't know which one it is. By SUVAT, I'll just write down S, U, V, A and T. S being the displacement, U the initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration and T the time. So to work out displacement we need a zero level. And I'm going to take that zero level as the starting point here. So taking upwards as positive, its displacement is going to be positive. Then it's going to come back down here. Its displacement at this point would be zero. But when it comes down to the ground, its displacement would be minus 8 meters. So we'll pop that in there, minus 8 meters. It's 8 meters below the starting point. U, the initial velocity, well the speed was 3 meters per second. It was upwards, so the initial velocity would be plus 3 meters per second. Final velocity, we don't know. Acceleration due to gravity, well throughout this problem, it's axed downwards, so it's in the negative sense, okay? So that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second per second. And the time, time of flight, the time it takes to go up here and back down, well, that's what we're trying to find. So what would we want to use to find out the time? Will it be an equation that hasn't got V in it? And the one that we would use would be S equals UT plus a half a t squared. So we just need to put our values into the equation and we have s is minus 8 equals ut, so that's going to be 3t, plus a half times a, which is minus 9.8, times t squared. s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So a half of minus 9.8 is going to be 4.9 minus 4.9t squared. So we've got a quadratic equation looming up that we need to rearrange into the right format. So I'm going to add 4.9t squared to both sides, subtract 3t from both sides, and then we've got minus 8 equals 0. 
So we've got our quadratic equation in the correct format that it equals zero. Now normally if this was an exam question or maybe one in the textbook, they generally give you one that will factorize. This one doesn't, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula being t equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And a would be 4.9, b would be minus 3 and c would be minus 8. So if I use that formula we're going to have minus b so that's going to be plus 3 minus minus 3, we'll just leave it as 3. And then plus or minus the square root of b squared so that's minus 3 all squared minus 4 times a which is 4.9 times c which is minus 8 all divided by 2a 2 times the 4.9 now if you do that on your calculator you'll find that you'll get t to come out as two values one of them will be 1.620 and so on and the other one will be a negative value minus 1.007 and so on and the thing is, t has to be greater than zero. So since t is greater than zero, we can only have one value then for t, and it's got to be this positive value. So therefore, what we've got is that t, the time of flight, is 1.62 seconds, if we round it, say, to three significant figures, 3SF. OK, now... Our next problem is to work out the speed that the ball hits the ground. So when the ball hits the ground, it's a common mistake to think that it's zero. We're looking at the speed just before it hits the ground. Well, we know it's going to be going downwards, so we'll put that in here as V. Okay? V meters per second. So how are we going to calculate V? Well the most obvious formula to use would be to use V equals U plus AT. And if you did use this, U we know is plus 3, so we've got 3, plus A which is minus 9.8 and we've got the T value here. Use the unrounded version not that it would make much difference in this particular example, but it could do in other ones. So we've got 1.620 and so on. And if you work this out, you'll find you get minus 12.876 and so on. Now we want the speed. This is the velocity. And you can see you've got the minus here because it's going downwards in the opposite sense to this. So when it comes to the speed, we can say that therefore the speed it's the magnitude of velocity. So in other words, it's 12.9 meters per second if we give it to three significant figures. Now, it wasn't the only way of doing this because you could have used another formula. You could have used v squared equals u squared plus 2as. But you've got to be very careful with this one. Very easy to make a mistake. Because u... Well, that's going to be the 3, and we're going to square that, so 3 squared, plus 2 times acceleration due to gravity, which is minus 9.8, and S, the displacement, is minus 8. And if you work this out, you'll find that V squared comes out at 165.8. And so to get V, we just need to square root both sides. And if you do that, you'll get that V equals... Now... Don't forget, though, it's plus or minus. Plus or minus 12.876 and so on. And it's very easy to forget that plus or minus and get 12.876. OK, that's the speed, but it's this is the velocity. And really, V for this question shouldn't really be plus or minus. It is actually the minus. Because... We know that the velocity is acting in the downward sense, opposite to the upward positive sense. So, in actual fact, V is really minus 12.876. 
but when it comes to the speed we've got the speed again then as being equal to 12.9 meters per second to three significant figures so as I say the point about doing it this way is really you should end up with a minus at this stage okay well I hope that's given you some idea then on how you could handle a question like this where you throw a ball upwards off of a balcony